Hello, this is Eric of Not Baus and welcome to the history of AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. This is part one of a multi-part series with commentary. Now let's get started. May 1st, 1969 in Sunnyvale, California, United States. This is the original headquarters of Advanced Micro Devices. And AMD originally started from another company. Let's find out how this actually started. Was founded in 1969 by Jerry Saunders and seven former Fairchild Semiconductor employees. Sanders was an electrical engineer before starting at AMD he was the director of marketing at Fairchild. He was known for being one of the best salespeople in the semiconductor industry. Sanders left, like many other Fairchild executives, due to the consistently increasing lack of support, the lack of opportunity, and flexibility within the company. In September 1969, AMD initially became a second source supplier of microchips designed by Fairchild and National Semiconductor. National Semiconductors would later in time face many years of struggles. In 1997, Natsemi merged with Cyrix in a deal worth 550 million USD. In the end, this only delayed the fate of the already struggling companies. National Semiconductor would later be acquired on April 4, 2011 by Texas Instruments. Other notables that left Fairchild are Robert Noyce, who had developed the first silicon integrated circuit in 1959 at Fairchild. Robert, together with Gordon Moore, left Fairchild and founded the semiconductor company Intel in July 1968. Under Gordon Moore's leadership, Intel introduced the world's first single-chip microprocessor known as the Intel 4004. Many in the tech world know Gordon for the term Moore's Law, stating his observation that the number of transistors per square inch on an integrated circuit had doubled every year since the integrated circuit was invented. But Gordon himself revised this to every two years. Back to AMD. Sanders felt he could do more, be something bigger. Indeed, his feelings were correct. As it stands today, from the ground he laid, AMD is now stronger than ever, but faced many struggles that nearly ended them. But where did this company all start? The company started their focus on producing logic chips. AMD saw the lack of quality control as a sore point in the current market and struck swiftly. They guaranteed quality control, stating it met the United States military standard. By November 1969, the company manufactured its first product, the AM9300, which began selling in 1970. That same year, AMD produced its first proprietary product, the AM2501 logic counter, which was highly successful. In 1971, the AM2505, which was its best-selling product, it had the fastest multiplier available. In 1971, AMD entered the RAM chip market. Their first module was the AM3101, which was a 64-bit bipolar RAM. AMD's total sales for that year reached 4.6 million US. When considering inflation, that is over 29 million dollars. As you can see, Things were happening very, very quickly. Technology was changing at this time. Originally, computers were using vacuum tubes to actually do everything. And the transistor was so much more efficient and small. Well, this was a time of change and AMD had quite a bit of talent and they just went for everything. They tried to use their contracts to actually get more money and to advance more. So they invested in themselves and now they're growing quickly. In 1972, the company finally went public, selling IPOs in the hopes to gather more funding for expansion. In 1973, AMD became the second source for Intel's MOS LSI circuits. 
MOS meeting metal oxide silicon transistor, aka a MOS transistor, and LSI meaning large scale integration. Only two years later in 1975, AMD was producing 212 products, of which 49 were proprietary. That same year, AMD reverse engineered a clone of Intel's 8080A CPU and entered the market with the AM9080. These processors received part number 9080A and had enhanced electrical characteristics and lower power dissipation than the original Intel parts. In 1976, Intel entered into a cross-licensing agreement with AMD. This allowed AMD a copper race license to the microcode in Intel's microprocessors and peripherals. This agreement allowed AMD the status of being an authorized second source company. AMD manufactured the 8080 microprocessors in plastic and ceramic packages from 2 to 4 MHz. In 1977, AMD entered a joint venture with Siemens. Siemens purchased 20% of AMD's stock. The two companies established advanced microcomputers, respectively, in Silicon Valley and in Germany. This agreement allowed AMD the opportunity to enter the microcomputer development and manufacturing field. Eventually, the vision for advanced microcomputers diverged, and AMD bought Siemens' share in the U.S. division of the company in 1979. October 15, 1979, AMD listed its stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. In 1980, they expanded even into the telecommunications industry. It was in 1981, only two years after the acquisition, that they closed the subsidiary company Advanced Microcomputers. AMD went back to focus on manufacturing second source Intel 86 microprocessors, entering into a 10 year x86 license agreement with Intel October of that year. One year later, the agreement also extended to the original 1976 AMD Intel cross licensing deal. The result of the agreement was that AMD became a second source manufacturer of Intel x86 microprocessors and related chips, and Intel provided AMD with database tapes for its 8086, 8186, and 8286 chips. In 1983, it introduced the INT Standard 1000. This was the highest manufacturing quality standard in the entire industry. In 1984, AMD again made a clone CPU from Intel Designs, the AM286. This CPU was identical to the chip from Intel, however it had a higher clock speed of 20 MHz versus Intel's 12.5 MHz. February 19, 1986, AMD introduces the first 1 million bit EEPROM. The AM27C1024 utilized AMD's unique CMOS process for UV erasable, electrically programmable memories. Also made the Fortune 500 based on its 1984 income for its first time. Back to AMD's 286, which clocked much higher than Intel's CPU, about twice as fast. Intel didn't take kindly to this and tempers rose. Intel attempted to exclude AMD from the next generation of 386 processors. It took four and a half years of arbitration for a court decision which found that Intel was not obligated to transfer every new product to AMD. AMD was left to figure out the 386 on their own while Intel dragged AMD through the courts for years. In the mid-1980s, AMD released the AMD 7910 and the AMD 7911, dubbed World Chip. This was an FSK frequency shift keying modem that ran on Bell and CCITT tones. In 1996, AMD decided to move out of the DRAM market, Dynamic Random Access Memory. The reason why is the market was flooded and margins were razor slim. So the same year, AMD decided to continue advancing in the CMOS process. CMOS process is BIOS. 
complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Computer bio settings are manufactured using the CMOS process. AMD wrote out the mid-1980s crisis by aggressively innovating and modernizing. In 1986, AMD focused on the RISC processors. RISC meaning reduced instructions at computer. Some people might remember the RISC processor made by Sun Microsystems, named Spark. Short for Scable Processor Architecture, AMD released their AM29000, known by many as 29K. These processors were used in many laser printers and not as a general use computer processor. AMD continued working hard in different sectors while working tirelessly to reverse engineer Intel's 386 CPU. Intel kept things tied up in court battles. The result was that AMD finally won their case and the right to sell the reverse engineered AM386 CPU. AMD decided to be a thorn in Intel's side by outperforming and undercutting Intel's prices at the same time. In April 1993, AMD introduced the AM486 processor. This CPU proved to be popular with original equipment manufacturers, OEM for short. Monday, July 19, 1993, AMD begins production of Fab 25 in Austin, Texas. Set for completion in 1994, the name Fab 25 was given for 25 years in the history of AMD. Finally, in an agreement effective 1996, AMD received the rights to the microcode in the Intel X386 and X486 processor families, but not the rights to the microcode in the generations to follow. In 1996, AMD released their first processor fully built from the ground up known as the K5. The K was a reference to the word kryptonite in reference to Superman's only weakness. This reference was calling Intel Superman, and AMD had the stuff to bring Superman down. While the number 5 was to signify this is a 5th generation x86 processor, this time Intel changed the name of their processor from a number to the name Pentium. In the same year, AMD purchased the company Next Gen. The AMD K6, 300 MHz to be exact, was the first time I've ever actually heard of advanced micro devices. I went to the store and who, like, what's this AMD? So this 300 megahertz processor is only 300 something dollars. Well, Intel was like 800 something dollars. It's like, okay, I'm gonna build an AMD system for my first ever custom computer that I'm building for myself. Expanding on AMD's own design team, through this acquisition came the K6 processor released in 1997. The K6 used the Socket 7 platform and was a bit slower than Intel's equivalently clocked CPUs. But by adding more cache to the CPU, the K6-3-450 were faster than Intel's Pentium 2 in most productivity-oriented tasks. In 1998, the K6-2 was the first microprocessor to implement 3D Now. This instruction set helped boost the processor performance substantially by up to four times the performance under well-optimized tasks. The first implementation of 3D Now contained 21 instructions. These instructions supported single instruction, multiple data, SIMD, enabling it to perform vector processing, sadly with Intel owning most of the market. The software never gained quite the traction AMD really hoped for. In 2010, the instruction set was dropped, only leaving the Prefetch and Prefetch W instruction. In 1999, Dredson Fab 30 began mass production of 200mm wafers. The name Fab 30 came about being that AMD was founded in 1969, and the Fab being opened in 1999 was 30 years in the making. On June 23, 1999, Advanced Micro Devices released their 7th generation x86 processor, named Athlon. This was the first desktop processor to reach clock speeds of 1 GHz. For the first time ever, AMD could not make their processor run on the same socket as Intel, due to the licensing issues surrounding Intel's slot 1 connector. 
What AMD decided to do is make a socket A PGA or pin grid array CPU with 462 pins. This was an iconic CPU with great performance that branched out into value and high-end range. In February 2000, Via Technologies purchased both Sintar Technologies and Cyrex. National Semiconductor sold off Cyrex due to losses it was taking from trying to compete in the processor war. While Sintar produced low-cost, power-efficient windchip, their windchip 2 was the only non-AMD CPU on socket 7 to support 3D Now instructions. June 5, 2000, AMD introduced the Thunderbird processor, the first with copper interconnects, which was made to replace the aging aluminum designs. The use of copper allowed lower electrical resistance, which was needed for higher clock speeds at a smaller manufacturing node. The road to copper was not an easy one. It required a large investment in retooling and had to be manufactured differently than aluminum. The AMD Athlon. This was a huge leap in performance. I actually had the Duron and the Thunderbird processor. Boy, it was great for gaming. Intel had their Pentium 3 and later released their Pentium 4 which had high clock speeds but not the same performance. March 6, 2000, AMD was the first to break the 1 GHz speed barrier with the release of the Athlon 1000. June 5, 2001, AMD releases their first multi-processor platform. This allowed two separate sockets on one motherboard to accelerate server and workstation performance. October 9, 2001, the Athlon XP was released, dubbed XP to mean extended performance. These CPUs were given a PR rating so that it could be understood that the performance was higher than Intel's higher clocked parts. For example, the 1.53 GHz processor had a PR rating of 1800 plus. These processors had great performance for the respective clock speeds. Intel at the time had released the Pentium 4 CPU using a netverse architecture built for clock speeds but lacked the performance. Most consumers looked at clock speeds when determining what system to purchase, often not understanding what performed better or worse. AMD used the PR rating to avoid lost sales for the many that did not understand what kind of performance they were actually receiving. This concludes part one in a many part series of the history of AMD. Thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe and leave any other suggestions or other history videos you may want to see in the future. Have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and Hot.